<laughs> all right, I'm laughing because this shit's out of hand and this shit's funny, all right? So Yo, something that I forgot to do before we get into this video, I should have did it at the beginning. Well, technically I'm spicing this in at the beginning, but anyway, I'm gonna put product links to everything that I'm using to make this job happen because if you're in a situation that's not as bad as mine or just as bad as mine, you definitely wanna know what I did. So product links for everything that I use will be below in the description so you can click it, go to it, and order it if you want to so you can do your headlights and hopefully make them turn out like mine. I'm not finished yet, but hopefully they turn out damn awesome. All right, enjoy this video. What's up, what's up, what's up? So, it is time to get started to some degree on the JDM conversion. But first, we gotta do a couple of things like inspection on the front end. Second inspection, you know how things are when you first get into something and you get it home and then you start looking at it and you find other little stuff that you're like, damn, okay. So, definitely was very wild and excited to get uh, this portion, this piece, because this is a major piece of the puzzle. Without this, I cannot do everything else that I want to do. So this was very important. Uh, with that being said, there are some things that definitely have to be addressed. And quite possibly, there are some things that I, I might have to end up purchasing. Not brand new because you can't get this shit brand new, but I might end up purchasing other units that may be in better condition than the ones I have if I cannot restore them. So let's get into it right there is our first thing we're gonna have to do now if you can see hopefully I can get an angle these lenses are pretty rough all right um, they're pretty cracked up uh, there seem to be some hairline cracks in here that I don't think are gonna come out because if you look from the side that's pretty through and through I don't think that's coming out this this discoloration in here already kind of points me in the direction that I will be disassembling or attempting to disassemble the whole headlamp assembly and basically restoring the internal portion of this. But first, I want to see how good I can go ahead and restore the lenses. This lens is far off worse than the passenger side, although it doesn't have as many cracks. And what I'm noticing is somebody literally try to spray paint clear this shit so i don't know how much of that will even come off and if it will so with that being said and that being observed observed that tells me that i'm not gonna waste my time with bullshit spray and wipe type kits this is gonna have to go a little bit more towards body work style i'm going to have to wet sand and bring these up and then decide what type of kit I'm gonna use from there. So I already know like wipe and dry kits are out. I haven't fully decided which kit I'm gonna get, but I did, however, uh, look at some different products, look at some different reviews, look at some different outcomes, trying to compare which situation might be as similar to mine as possible. And that is definitely something that you wanna do anytime you're getting into this. This shit's been done before. We're not doing anything that somebody hasn't done already and then millions and hundreds of thousands of people have done and fucked up or came out successful. So that's why it's always important to do some research. I mean, we got YouTube, which you're on now with me. Don't forget to subscribe. We got forearms. We got stores that literally have abundance amount of shit, especially when it comes to auto body, because they know that the natural home builder wants to somewhat maybe do a little bit of auto body himself. So with that being said, I have already found a store that is gonna give me the best opportunity to collect the materials that I'm gonna need. Now I looked at Summit Racing. Summit Racing is a shit ton distance from me, but it's close, It's I mean, it's within an hour. So that's not a bad drive. Uh, thing with that is a lot of the products I looked at, they were at their warehouse would have to be shipped and they'd be here the next day. And I kind of want to get started on this shit today. So if I can't, then I can't. But then I looked at AutoZone. Never, I never really buy shit from AutoZone, but oil and accessory shit, uh, as far as their auto parts, fucking garbage. But they had one or two things, didn't have everything. So our likely best candidate is going to be O'Reilly's Auto Parts. None of these people gave me a shout out, but you all know them. 
you know we all damn near use them for something at some point in time so O'Reilly's Auto Parts is going to give us the best opportunity to get the materials to try to make this happen now as I said I am concerned about this because this shit is pretty thick uh, if I cannot get that I am likely looking at getting these into an auto body shop and letting them do that and then maybe I'll just take them apart and didn't do the inside. I also don't like the fact that I see some debris in there, which means somebody may have tried to take these apart before. And if that is the case, they shouldn't be as hard to take apart. I also have reached out to fellow patrons, Drop Gear, Drop Gear Motorsports. They do a lot of headlight re retrofits. I reached out to them. I haven't heard anything back yet. So I'm going to take shit into my own hands and just get started the way I see it. I'm not going to fuck anything up because I'm going to take my time with this. I'm not going to make it worse because it already is shit, kind of. So if it doesn't work, I spend maybe, I'm looking at spending a budget, maybe 60 bucks on everything I need. Hopefully I can get under that. And if not, you know, I have to hand it off to somebody else or maybe get two new, two other lenses that are in far better condition than mine in which at this point in time the market is leading those to be anywhere between 500 and 700 dollars for the pair plus they're coming out of tokyo taiwan and all types of other fucking places that we don't know about and that lends you to possibly not getting your shit because majority or not you're going through ebay ah, i hate that so let me get to the store let me get back we'll just i'll show you what i decided i'm going to get and then we'll start the process this shit crazy and it's partially because of me because I can never seem to just do something regular, okay? I said I was gonna go to O'Reilly's Auto Parts, right? Went there, they didn't have everything I needed. They had everything I, they had a lot of things I needed except for a couple of things I needed. So then I'm just gonna show you, forget going through it. I went to O'Reilly's Auto Parts. They had majority of what I needed, not everything I needed. So then I ended up at Summit Racing. They had quite a bit of the things I needed, but not one other component I needed. So then I ended up at AutoZone because neither O'Reilly's or Summit had an empty spray bottle with a top on it. Now, I'm waiting on one more part from Amazon because none of them had this other part. Well, not part, this other chemical that I'm using by Chemical Guys. So once that gets here, we'll get started. Now we can get started. And it looks like it's gonna fucking rain. And this is what say if it rains and I can't do this today, I legitimately could have ordered everything through Amazon and it would have been here tomorrow morning. That would suck. Let's see. <laughs> all right, I'm laughing because this shit's out of hand and this shit's funny. All right, so okay, listen, I spent. We're gonna this this restoration kit has by far cost me probably five times more than any other restoration kit I would have got in for a reason and I will explain it, but still it's gonna sound stupid. It, it is gonna be stupid, but hopefully it turns out right. If it doesn't, then it's money wasted. But anyway, I spent 13.90 with Amazon because none of the other three places had this, which I wanted, all right? Okay, I got that. Then I spent another 4.27 at AutoZone because they didn't have, nobody else had the empty spray bottles so I could do the wet sand and spray all that other shit. I already know what you're gonna say. Uh, then I spent eighty dollars and four cents at O'Reilly's Auto Parts, getting majority of the other shit that I wanted to get, and I spent forty-two dollars and fifty-eight cents at Summit Racing. That giving me a grand total of one hundred and forty dollars and seventy-nine cents. I hope it works. So here's the rundown. Here's the lineup. All right. So got this. Really, almost basically for nothing, because I found this in one of my old stashes which is why I bought this to have this backing and go on a drill, but I have it now. All right, so here are the sandpaper that I'm gonna use. Remember, I said my headlights are considerably worn and bad. So we're gonna do the wet sanding method, but I also went and did a lot of research on the turtle wax kit and it works pretty damn well. But the only thing I really didn't wanna do out of here was using their, uh, basically their base coat and their sealer, okay? So I didn't really want to use that, but everything else I wanted to use, especially the lubricant for the wet sanding and you know, their um, compound 
their compound breakdown, especially to get the yellow and all the other shit off. Okay, I bought two kits because I wasn't sure if one kit was gonna be enough. And also the sand pads in here, because I'm gonna be doing quite a bit of sanding, trying to get some of that down, because it looks like somebody clear coated. So I bought two of those kits with the sandpaper. Chemical guys definitely went ahead and bought this hex pad to apply the polishing, okay? But before that, I got the pad uh, conditioner. Now, a lot of people aren't doing that, and this is where you probably might run into troubles, especially with swirls, using the drill. And definitely have a drill with multi-speeds if you don't have a real polisher. I didn't buy a real polisher. I almost did because I'm that type of person just say, fuck it, I want to buy everything for the complete job, but I didn't buy it. So I got the spray conditioner for the pad, which is gonna help that when we start really getting to that point, hoping that everything is gonna come crystal clear. It will do that without swirl marks. So sometimes when you put the compound on here in dots, these other spots in between the dots are dry and that can streak. Went ahead, we're doing a clay job. Yes, we're doing a clay job on the lights first to remove dirt and debris the right way, all right? So we're gonna do a clay job, medium clay by Chemical Guys, along with the clay luber. There you go, you gotta lube it up before you do it up, all right? Then, boom, headlight restoration. This has a sealer in it, okay? So it is a polish. Basically, it's an all-in-one. This kit was made by Chemical Guys to do the job completely without all of this other stuff. Given you don't have heavy oxidation and a lot of pretty much what I have on mine. So I definitely wanna use this to finish it up because it does have the sealer and I love the way it looked given if we can get the headlights to the point where this will really take effect instead of just using what's in here because they just kind of pretty much wipe it on. It's not really like a polish, they just wipe it on. I wanted something we could put on there, put on the polish pad and get as, get as good in crystals as we can see, okay? So then I got the water bottle to keep continuously spraying, keep lubrication while this should go over here with the wet sanding process. But I forgot that was in there, so I bought the water bottle, sprayer, I'll use it. Got the pad, got the terry cloth, and the tape. I got the tape. I'm not sure if I'm gonna tape it because I'm really not worried about the color because I'm gonna, is that thunder? Yes, that's thunder. Fuck. But anyway, I'm not worried about the color, but I might just tape it just for demonstration purposes in case somebody's watching this video and hasn't ever done it before and give a full overview, all right? Just pull this Integra back. I'm gonna back that one up to give me some seat room, grab my damn roller chair, and we're gonna get to work, finally. I'm about to go ahead and get, these, get this headlight taped up so we could do it and then compare it to the other one to see if we're really gonna notice a difference. Let's get it taped. Damn it, I forgot to wash the head lens first, then clay it, so now I gotta wash it. Okay, so now I have the towel I'm gonna use as far as wiping this head lens off or wiping it down. I have the clay bar, medium clay bar by Chemical Guys, and I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna set it up here. Uh, it doesn't matter if it smells like trash. Right here, by Chemical Guys, I'm only gonna take half of this bar out and then leave the rest of it in there, being sure not to drop this shit on the ground. And you don't need to use the whole bar, so just take like a good little chunk or something of it off right there, and then go ahead and mold the rest of this back together. Put the plastic back around it and then put the rest of it back in here for safekeeping. That way you still have some if you need a bit more. All right, so take that, put it into a nice little square I can use. <clears throat> Gonna crack open the clay luber because we definitely don't want to scar the headlights any more than they are. They're in pretty bad condition, uh, which does have me a bit concerned, but I'm gonna get to this. And I'm only gonna show you a little bit of this as I do it, and then <clears throat> I'll do the rest without you and we'll move on to the next step because you, you all have already been through a lot. So it's pretty simple. Lubricate this up, open it up, spray that on there. Uh, I hope they got like a spray, not just a stream. Yep, spray it on there like so. And we're only gonna work horizontally or vertically, not in circles, especially during sanding. You don't need to put excessive pressure on the clay. You can already feel the grit and grime and you might be able to hear it. Maybe not. 
But yeah, I can feel it definitely, and I can feel it getting smoother. So I will spray a little bit here, do this until it gets pretty uh, smooth or until I don't feel it. Then I'll just roll the clay ball back up to kind of get me a new working surface area and then flatten it back out, put a little bit on the clay and then go back to it. And I can feel it picking up the grit that is on the headlands. Now, how, now most, most of the kits I see, they're not doing this. And I think that's a big part of the problem because even though you wash the headlands, you're not getting enough of that dirt and grit out of there. I definitely suggest claying it, which is why I spent a little bit more money on the kit that I put together because I wanted to follow certain steps. So this is one, so I'm gonna finish this up and then we're gonna move on to the next step. Right here, just dripping off. So I am going to, and you can almost kind of see a little bit of the difference in the headlight just after the claying process. Look at that. You can already see a bit of difference just from claying. I haven't even completed a wet sanding process yet. That's just from claying. So that gives me a little bit of promise. So now I'm gonna go ahead, three steps, 2,000, 2,500, and then 3,000. Or you can follow the turtle kit. They give you an assortment of four, two pads with four different sides leading you all the way up. So they're doing a transition of four, starting with the green, then the teal, and then I think it is the gray, and then finally ending off with the purple. So they even have them numbered here. So they do three, which I might break those open and see how they feel and see if one is more finer than the 3000. And if it is, I'll end with that. So I might even do a process that calls for me to do almost what's that? Three of my own, four of their seven step set wet sanding process to see how it goes. So I'm gonna get started on that. We'll look at the difference when I finish. Because this process is going to be a bit tedious because we're gonna go from 2000 to 2500 to 3K doing this process over and over again. I'm just gonna do a little bit now so you can see that see what I'm doing and then you'll just repeat those same steps with each level of grit sandpaper. I've seen people go as high as 3500. I will not be going that high because I could not find 3500. So I'm hoping 3000 will be enough. Spray lubricant, I'm going to also prime the sandpaper itself. Go ahead, spray the entire headlight in case I forget and I get overzealous. And we're gonna work horizontally or vertically, not in circles. Oh yeah, you can, I can feel that. That's horrible. Be a little liberal with that, with that moisture. You don't want it dry because you can scar the headlight. So don't be afraid to use a bit of that. And you can already see a lot of this grime coming off. So things went a little deeper. Uh, the 2000 wasn't enough. It just wasn't cutting through whatever was there, whether it was residue or a bunch of corrosion. Now I'm starting to break through. We do have a little haze. Uh, we're gonna get rid of that. Hopefully that won't be burned. But now I can actually feel the smoothness happening. It's still a bit rough here and you can see those lines and where this is smoothed out. And these cracks definitely have got more shallow. I'm definitely gonna have to make sure I keep the water on there, keep it really moisturized and really work my way and just keep filling and wiping with the rag to make sure that I'm not burning through the plastic. Cause if I burn through the plastic, that's definitely something and I'm, I'm out of there, all right? So just backing up and that was not polished you still can see a difference. I'm gonna keep this process up. It is gonna take me a bit longer than I thought because I'm gonna go from 1,000, definitely gonna to have to step up from that to like the 2,000, 2,500, and then 3,000 to get that out, all right? So uh, bear with me. It's been probably a solid good 30 minutes to an hour on this one headlight. That is how bad it is. Remember, this is what we're working with. Look at that. They actually did put some type of coating on here, okay? Now, I didn't wanna risk it. Now, I looked it up and somebody was like, you can go as low as 320. That's way too coarse for me. I'm way too afraid, yes, afraid to scratch these lenses. And if I scratch them to that point, they're done, period. They're gonna be horrible. I have at least got it to the point where you can actually see the factory lines in it. I'm still working with a thousand grit. So what I'm doing is, I'm, I'm working with a thousand grit. As it gets milky, I take it and clear it off one way. I always come from inside out. I've got to the point now where I can kind of surface check and wherever it's rough, I'm spotting that up. And you can already start to see the difference in this headlight. Now it's gonna be hazy. 
because I'm working with a thousand grit and we're not anywhere near the polishing stage yet. I still have to go up through 2,000, 2,500, then three grand to smooth all of this out. You can see some of the deep cracks that you saw earlier have pretty much died down. You can see them a bit here and there, but I can't hardly feel them at all. These cracks are not going away. Those stress fractures are there to stay. This side definitely was jacked and you can see there and it's pretty smooth all right so now all i'm going to do is now I, I got a little rough patch here that i just felt i'm going to go in here clean that up then once i get everything on the level plan field i'll wipe it down again and go over it with the dull 1000 completely then i'm going to go ahead and move it up to two grand all right that's what's happening i'm probably not going to report back until i finish the complete wet sanding job this is probably going to take me two hours. These head, these headlights were in pretty bad condition. So if I can get them back, come back just a little bit. Now, remember, this is just phase one, getting the lenses restored. After that, I have to find some time, take these head units out of the car, take them apart and re store the inside bezels okay because there are some chrome pieces that have started to turn orange because that chrome has worn off i have to break them down paint them spray them so it's going to be a process for this so i'm hoping to help you all out there with with something that may come across like this all right i'll check back in after i finish them i stepped on my front lip on the show car that's not good so i mean but then again we're switching jd in front so it's you know it's not that bad either check it out this is why i also bought the kit with the, uh, I should have, I said this before I think, but I'm gonna re-elaborate. The turtle wax kit with the spray uh, wet sanding lubricant, because whatever they put in this gives you a bit more protection so you don't scar the headlights. So now that I only have a little bit left for this side, because I bought two kits for each side, and you see how much I've used just on 1,000. I'm not even through the other grits yet. Now I have a bucket of water with a, I mean, not even a drop, a smidge of Dawn soap just to give me that protection. I'm not sure if that's something you're supposed to do, but I do know Dawn soap wipes away grease and grime, so it shouldn't leave any coating or anything on the headlamp. And give me a little bit of protection with that bit of soapiness in there. Very minimal, like I said, it's, it's not really a lot because I don't want to take a chance on that but just a note on that we got progress we got progress so this is what i did all right look still can see a difference look at this headlight assembly look at where we came from all right look at that that is no compound yet and no polish that is all wet sand all right so even now wet sanding i can see more things that have to be done inside the lens if you can see in there the chrome has started peeling up. At least now you can see the lines in the headlight lens. You can see Kodo, you can see Honda. You can see that the chrome is peeling and that is something that I will have to address like I thought. Now these stress fractures won't go anywhere, but you gotta understand this is a JDM. There's no telling 94 through 2000 uh, nose cut. So they're not cracked up too bad and broken. I think that maybe somebody had been in here before, especially with seeing this and just didn't do a great job. If not, when I pull this off, that'd be the next YouTube video. But right now I'm finna get to actually doing the compound. I'm gonna get the drill out, show you a little bit of that. And then I'll cut the camera off and come back with you all to uh, finish up on the polishing side. But you will see what it looks like after I remove the compound. Now, this is the other process. Now, this is why I spent so much money because I wanted to combine these processes and these materials, okay? So the next thing I wanna use is this compound, lens clarifying compound by Turtle Wax, all right? After I finish doing that and getting that lens nice and, and compound out and rubbed out, and I'm gonna use this pad right here, and uh, I have my other pad right here that I'm gonna use to compound. That's why I bought that. So I could use that to apply the compound and a terry cloth to remove it. Then I'm gonna come back when that's done and put the Chemical Guys Headlight Restore, which also has a sealer in there, and then I won't really need to use the uh, sealer lens sealing kit and a base coat kit that they supply I really didn't like it because it's just like a um like a wet nap and you wipe it on and then you let it dry and it's cool but i don't know i'm not really feeling that i'm gonna go with chemical guys with their sealer involved in here and see how that looks if it ever feels something that i need to do i come back and maybe do this but i really don't want to i'm not thinking about doing that i want to polish and wipe with terry cloth and get that overall smooth it's just something about that wet wipe things seems like it'll leave it shrieking i'm already working with some pretty rough circumstances so 
Time to apply compound, let's go. Lens is dry, you can tell because of the nice even haze and that's a good indication. Now I don't have a bunch of cracks and stuff in there. It's uh, very faint, a nice even haze. Pretty much got a lot of that stuff out of there, thank God. Uh, so basically 1000 grit, then to 2000 grit, then to 2500, and then I believe uh, 3000 and 3500 grit is what I end up doing. Now we're gonna do compound. So a couple of key things when using these drills, hopefully you have one with a speed switch. Click that to number one, the lowest setting. Another thing, if you have a torque setting, go ahead and put it on something that if you apply a good amount of pressure, it'll start torquing out. That way you don't burn into the lens. Just something else extra precautionary to take. I have a backing pad here, which is foam, and then I have this nice four, I think this is three and a quarter inch above that, and it gives me a nice little lip so I'm not running into this plastic piece. And then I'm gonna take the Chemical Guys spray up Bat pad conditioner, condition the pad. Uh, that was string we wanted on spray. Condition the pad right there, basically helping prevent any dry areas. Then I'm gonna take my compound, I already took the seal off here, and I'm got, I got my towel right here to remove my compound and my dolly seat. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one, two, three, four dots. The rest of the pad is conditioned, and we're going to apply compound starting from the inside going out, all right? Control it with this hand right here so the, not, the end nose doesn't walk off on you, all right? Variable speed trigger, control that as well. Get a little bit more cutting compound on there. One, two, three, four, four dots like so. Do the rest. Try to keep an even amount of pressure on that pad. Again. And I'm sucking up a little bit of that when I'm putting it on so they're not as thick as you may think. And do this side. I got a feel for the drill so I can go ahead and feel comfortable controlling it from the rear. Now we got the compound on there. Let's go ahead and let it sit and uh, let it dry real quick. Then we're gonna come back and it's drying now. And we're, we're gonna make sure we keep our pad off of the ground. We don't want any rocks or debris to get in here and scratch up the work that we've done, all right? Once this is dry, we're gonna come back white and then see what it looks like. And this is before we even get to really uh, really polishing, because I this is not the polishing pad, I got the polishing pad, and I'm gonna do the polishing with the chemical guys and go from there. This is the compound, as you see right here, clarifying compound still is called, but I'm gonna finish up my so-called so -called polishing with the chemical guys. Even closer, it's pretty much dry right there. I'm gonna take the towel, terry cloth. Just go ahead and wipe like so. And that is the first application of compound right there. Look at that. Look at that. Tell me you don't see the difference. Look at this. That is where we came from, ladies and gentlemen. That is where we came from. This is where we are before we even get good into polishing. That's where we are. That's working out. So can I say $140 well spent? So far I can. I think combining processes that I've seen, I've researched and looking at how bad my situation is, I think if you're gonna have a situation this bad, you're not gonna, if you're gonna be able to get one kit and make it happen, it's gonna be the turtle kit because they give you four different grits of sandpaper squares, basically. They give you the liquid spray lubrication for the wet sanding process, then they give you the compound, then they give you a base coat and then a sealer. 
that is a complete kit. Some of these other kits I'm not sure about. Now, I know Chemical Guy says this will work, but I know they also said it will not work for situations that rough. So I'm gonna put the link below for this, that, all the sandpaper grits that I used, everything, the clay luber, everything. So you can basically have what I have and hopefully come out with the same outcome, all right? So I'm gonna get started back to the compound and then we'll come back after I finish compounding this lens. I'm probably gonna do about three times. Then we're gonna go ahead, finish up with this and see what we got. I applied three coats of compound and removed three coats. Now it's time to go in with the Chemical Guys Headlock Restoring, which is a polish and it has a sealer in it all in one, all right, so I don't have to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I got a four inch pad right here that I'm gonna use to polish and I'm gonna go make sure that my drill is still set where I set it earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead, shake this up. So I'm gonna do six dots on here, more so in the inside than the outside because the headlamp is just about that. So I'm gonna hit about right here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now that I have my six dots on there, I'm going to take my pad conditioner again and a nice little spray on the pad conditioner. Now, sorry about that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna polish, but I'm gonna start the rotation away from here, but first I'm gonna dot the surface, all right? So I'm gonna go just like this, pack it on, pat it on, pat it on, pat it on. Everywhere I'm gonna be to go ahead and get basically some lubricant on there and some polish everywhere so I don't hit dry areas like that. Get the lower side, that corner up here. Now I'm gonna start the, ro the rotation as I'm out and then come in. Making sure they try to keep the pressure centered. Not the black backing part. Adapt it. twice giving me four layers and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the polish and it feels so slick and smooth making sure to get up in there try not to leave any polish on there and in this corner under that lens oh my gosh I see some areas that I could go back and do but I am completely satisfied knowing that I could get it this far honestly uh, I think I'm probably gonna leave the other one for another tomorrow. Let's check this out. So look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Compared to this. That is what you get right there. That is what we had. This is where we are. I'm loving that. Just. I'm gonna close the hood. You know what, matter of fact, I'm gonna put the other two coats of polish on, close the hood, and we'll see what it looks like compared to the other with the hood closed, all right? Last coat of polish is on, wiped off, time to see the work. And look at that. Look at there. You can see a reflection in there now. That's what we had. Let's just take a step back and look at that. So I'd say as long as I can get that one to look like that one, then disassemble them, restore them that way, reassemble them. I have a set of JDM black housing headlights that I can actually use instead of paying anywhere from another six to $700 for a second set 
that is in better condition than these and then go through this process again because more than likely it's going to need to happen on some degree of level but that is the type of product you can finish out with if you do this process right some of these kits are not worth it um you you may have to put together a optimus prime kit like i did so like i said description will hold all the links for the products i used of sandpapers, chemicals, all of that, even the tool I put in there in case you don't want to spend $70 to $100 for one of those orbiters, okay? That drill worked perfectly. It worked through that headlight. I have another battery that will work for that headlight and this is gonna be done. So I'm gonna finish this up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was a little bit long, I apologize, but I think that this process is a little bit underestimated and undervalued in some of the videos I see and some of the outcomes are not that great and I think I know why and I took a lot of time to analyze that and I'm pretty happy with what came out uh, so hey like I always say just build it be safe